Hello, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. You can find my website at the URL shown on the screen. A few months ago, I drafted an Alteryx best practices post, but I had a lot to write about and I never finished it. So I came back to it this week and it's really interesting to see what I still consider a best practice and also what I would add to it. So I'm going to finish that post, and it's turned out to be a combination of Alteryx tips I wish I had learned sooner, and habits I've created to drive efficiency and consistency in how I develop, organize, and review workflows. So let's get started with some of those Alteryx tips I wish I had learned sooner. And we're going to start in a select tool. And the first tip is this little checkbox, the apply checkbox. I worked in Alteryx for months before I ever noticed that this checkbox existed. And the apply checkbox is applying your changes. So not knowing that this was here, I would see that I had an error in my select tool. I would come into it. I would say update a column name. And then to see if the changes were accepted, I would click out of the tool again, which is entirely unnecessary and inefficient. So if you've never noticed this little checkbox button, that's what this does. There's also another handy button in all of your tools to help you navigate. Before I found this button, if I needed to trace the input or output of a tool, I would click on the tool and then follow the colored line until I found the tool that I was looking for. Which quite honestly is so dumb that I'm really even embarrassed to admit that I ever did this. That's what this navigate or navigation section is for. This sort tool is connected to a formula tool, several join tools, and a filter tool. And if I know that I'm looking for the filter, I can just double click on it and it jumps to it, which is a much better system than manually tracing lines. If you look at my or overview pane here, you can see just how big this workflow is and trying to follow lines throughout this thing was just not workable. Now, my third tip is related to unions. I highly recommend manually configuring your unions. So manually configure fields as opposed to the default settings, which is auto configure by name. I can't tell you how many times I've unioned things together with the auto by name function or, and then realized down the line that I had extra columns or a duplicate column. If you start with the manual union, you can easily confirm how your columns are lining up and then change it to auto when your workflow is complete. Next, we're gonna to go to input tools. Now, I like to line up my input tools either horizontally or vertically so that I can highlight them and then cache them in one fell swoop. I see a lot of users putting inputs throughout the workflow, usually closer to where they're actually used, but then to cache a workflow, you have to find them and select them one at a time, which is really inefficient. And on top of that, there's also a right click function that will line all your inputs up just in case they're a little out of whack. So I will select all these guys. I will right click and say align vertically, and then they snap together and I've already got them highlighted, but now I can right click and cache and run workflow. And so this makes it really easy to grab all of your inputs at one point in time. Now we'll talk about tip number five, and to do that, we'll go into a select tool. In your select tool, and also in your joins, your dynamic renames, and probably a few other tools, you'll see this little checkbox at the very bottom that has an asterisk unknown next to it. So if the unknown box is checked, any new columns will be passed through the tool. If it is unchecked, any new columns will not be passed through the tool. Or in the case of dynamic rename, if the box is checked, it will dynamically rename those columns, even though you didn't necessarily have them when you configured the tool. So this can be really handy, but you have to sort of think about it at when you first start building your workflow. So for example, at the start of my workflow, uh, when I place select tools near an input, I'm always going to check that box with the idea being that if I bring in data, odds are I'm going to use it and thus I want to pass it through to tools down the line. However, if we go to one of my tools near an output, here you'll notice that I don't have the unknown box checked and that's because one of the last steps in any of my workflows is usually removing columns that I don't want being placed into an output. 
And so I don't want to be surprised by columns getting sent through there. So I'm always going to uncheck right before an output. There may be other points in the flow where you, where you say to yourself, I don't want any accidental clutter. I'm going to keep this unchecked or vice versa. And that's fine, but you do have to think about it in advance. Okay, so my last tip is around the find panel. And one of the most recent updates to Alteryx, it included improvements to find or search functions. Now you can search for text in properties, annotations, column names, configuration, all sorts of places, basically anywhere in your workflow. So I use this in conjunction with annotations. So for example, this is one of the largest Alteryx projects that I, that I have, and it's applying business rules to data sets. Um, and that's what this big chunk of it is, is the business rules. I have almost a hundred of these. So if a user calls me and says, make a modification to rule 63, I don't want to have to manually hunt through this, but I know that I can search the annotations. So I have incorporated the rule number in my annotation, just do 45 and then I can double click on it and it will take me right to rule number 45 and I can very quickly and easily make a modification. Okay, so that covers all of the small tips or tricks that are things that I wish I would have known sooner. And now I'm gonna move on to habits that I've developed over time that also help to ensure consistent, efficient, and quality work. And so the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is forming tools of habit. And for that, I'm gonna jump back up to the top of my workflow here. So what do I mean tools of habit? Well, by that, I mean that I always place the same tools at the start and end of every workflow. I, I generally will always put a select, a data cleansing, an auto field, and a sort tool right after all of my inputs. And I've all, also recently started adding a filter tool where I'm working with user constants. And I have a post about user constants if you're unfamiliar with them. But my auto field tool is there in order to make sure that whatever I'm passing down the line is the smallest um, character and smallest field possible. Basically, it's for efficiency. The second tool is gonna be my data cleansing tool, and I'm always gonna remove leading and trailing white space. And then depending on my workflow, I may also replace nulls or blanks depending on the data itself. And then you'll also see that I always have select tools, and that's where I do my column renaming. I usually put a sort tool. I didn't in this particular one, but in more recent workflows, that's also become one of my habits is always adding a sort tool so that I can quickly and easily see what has essentially come out of my input. Now, not only do I know that certain tasks are now taken care of, but I can just grab them from other workflows and very easily place them on my canvas. And I also know what I'm going to have at the start and end of every workflow. It's not different. It's the same in everything that I build. Now, I don't have macros for these tasks because they're specific to each workflow and I'm gonna to have to go in and change the columns for each tool in case you were thinking, why don't I just build a macro for it? So now second, just like adding tools of habit is a habit, I have other what I call tasks of habit. So for example, I always rename my columns in a select tool just after the input. I don't rename columns within the input tool itself. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that doing this in a select is better. I, I just always do it this way for consistency so that if I'm searching for a column rename to change it, I know where to go to find it. Although for what it's worth, I do it this way so that I have fewer clicks to get to where the rename happens. I do think it's more efficient to do it here than in the input tool. Another task of habit that I have is relative to summarize tools. As you know, the summarize tool is going to change your column name to include the aggregation. And so I always wind up renaming it. And my habit is to always rename within the summarize tool itself rather than in a select tool or a join somewhere on down the line. So I, I know where to go in the event that that needs to get changed. And a third task of habit that I have, which I think is actually the most important, is to always, always, always explore the fallout of every single join. It's really tempting to think that you know that there will be no fallout or that you know why stuff falls out, but when you start joining up uh, tons of tables, as you can see that I do in this particular workflow, it becomes a lot more likely that you're gonna be wrong. 
And so I always make it a habit to explore the outputs of all of my left and right anchors. These small acts of habit and consistency mean that in large workflows, you're always gonna know what you've done and you won't have to search for things. Next, another one of my habits is uh, creating a naming convention and then sticking to it religiously. Now, the subject of naming conventions is pretty broad, but some things that you should make decisions about include your case spacing and punctuation, prefixes or suffixes, precision, and units of measure. So let's take a look at a few things that I've done in this workflow. Case spacing and punctuation. Personally, I prefer lowercase with spaces and no punctuation. The last project I worked on, we did use dynamic rename tools at the start and end of the workflow to apply title case. Um, but for me, I just find lowercase with no punctuation to be easy to consistently apply. And your punctuation can also be tricky. It's really easy to tell yourself hard no on punctuation, but then you find yourself uh, wanting to put parentheses around units of measure, for example. Okay, prefixes or suffixes. So in this workflow, I'm bringing in data from over 30 tables. Many of these tables have common columns. For example, start and end dates. I have tons of start and end dates and I wanna know what start and end date I'm looking at. And so you can see here that in the select tool, I have applied a prefix of JPP, which stands for my table name, job program phase, to all of the columns that I'm bringing through here. And this just makes it easier to know which start and end date comes from which table. So next let's talk about precision. An excellent example of precision in column naming is date and time columns. Here you'll actually see something that, um, it's because of this right here that I have adopted this habit. We're looking at start and end dates that are date times. And when I first built this workflow, it was really easy to just call this start date, end date. However, I ran into problems farther on down the workflow where I wanted to strip out the timestamp. Well, at that point, what do I call it? Just JPP start. In subsequent workflows, I have named these columns start date time, end date time, because it is the most precise. And then lastly, I just wanna mention units of measure because they're really easy to leave out. And so make it a habit to always include units of measure in either your column name or another column. Once you become habitual about naming conventions, you'll find that you don't have to go back through your workflows to correct things or update things or find yourself living with things that you wish you would have fixed, which is definitely the case with these columns right here. And you'll also get a lot fewer questions from users, which is always a good thing. Next, when I first started working with Alteryx, I had a lot of heartburn about dropping select and sort tools all over the place because I thought I wanted to have the smallest workflow possible. However, I've come to learn that placing select and sort tools where I need them to review data uh, saves me more time than what I spend scrolling through the results panel. And so my recommendation is to make it easy to see results by sorting and reordering any time that you need to. So finally, never suffer through running slow workflows. If you have a workflow that takes a long time to run, there are options for making it faster. The obvious option is caching the workflow but sometimes you can't do that. So in this case, I'm using dynamic queries with detour tools, and I can't cache and run these. So the next best thing is making use of input and output tools. I know that this is my bottleneck, and so I have created an output tool here and another input tool, and I will just delete this connection and connect into this output. Um, I could make this a little bit easier on myself by further putting these tools in a container that I can close and then only run this input. Now where this becomes a habit is knowing that you're going to have bottlenecks in some of your workflows and as you're building them by default just putting in these input and output tools. Because what I find, what I found was happening to me is that I would build out these workflows and they would be kind of slow and I just for some reason wouldn't want to go through the process of adding all this back in and dumping this in a container which was probably just sheer laziness but once I forced myself to do it I realized just how much faster it is and so I highly recommend compartmentalizing your workflows knowing where your bottlenecks are and eliminating them with containers inputs and outputs and that wraps up this video
Here's a quick summary of the six tips that we covered, things that I wish I would have known about in Alteryx when I started, and then my five habits for improving consistency and efficiency. Please feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear about your own tips and tricks for improving consistency and efficiency. Thanks.